What's up guys, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and in this video I'm going to give you my top 10 RPG Maker MV tips and tricks. So number 10, if you use direction fix on events you can allow the player to access it from all directions without messing up the image. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about. Right here we've got an event that doesn't have direction fix on and the image that we're using is actually four different uh, beasts in the same image, right? So if we talk to it from from each direction, it's going to illustrate one of those different uh, those those different sprites. But what if you know? Most likely, you're not going to want to do that. So if you talk to it from the right, it looks normal. But if you talk to it from the bottom, it suddenly transforms into a dragon. And if you talk to it from the left, it's a completely different beast. So that's not something you want to have in your game. And a simple tip and trick to fix it. Just select direction fix. So once it's got direction fixed, no matter what direction you talk from it or talk to it from, it's going to have the same. Basically, uh, basically it's going to be the same. So we talk from the bottom, we talk from the right, talk from the top. You can see it's uh, it's got a direction fix. So that's a good little tip and trick for you guys. Let's move on to tip number nine. If you're using Yanfly status menu core and the message core, you can add icons to your element status menu by typing slash i and x. Uh, before the name of your element types on the types tabs of your database. So let's let me show you what I'm talking about. When you go to your your elements here, before it says physical healing, enhancing, enfeebling, all that, you notice that before we have a little icon. So all of these icons can make it look a little more uh, customized. And and when you uh, see this same icon on your skills, you can you know associate it easily more easily with that element. So you can draw these icons very easy. All you have to do is go to your types tab. On the elements, you do slash i, and then in brackets, you put a number. Well, what number do you use? Well, you use whatever number that you want the icon to be. So how do you figure out what icon you want? And how do you figure out what numbers? Go to your skills, go to your types, whatever you want, uh, and then double click on the icon right here. It'll bring up your icon set.png, and then you can click on, well, okay, I want it to be that icon, right? Well, you look at that, boom, you hit the jackpot, 777. It tells you the icon number right there. So very easy, simple tip and trick. Let's move on to tip number eight. So you can use stepping on events to animate the map and make it look kind of more fluid and kind of lead the player in a certain direction. So let's, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about, the difference that it'll make. If we look at this little sparkle effect on the map that doesn't have stepping on it, it just looks like the sparkle's drawn on. But if you want to make that animated very easily, all you have to do is click on stepping, hit OK, and now when you look at this in game, you're going to have a much more fluid, much more animated uh, event, right? So now you can see it's sparkling. So you can sort of kind of put items, you know, if you want to notify, notify the player where you've got an item at so that it can, they don't have to check every nook and cranny. You can kind of, you know, steam line their, their adventure. They, you know, they're going to kind of go towards the sparkles. You could even do like a gingerbread or what is it a breadcrumb trail where you have sparkle effects so lots of things you can do uh, not just sparkle effects you can do the same trick on anything that you want to animate for example these waterfall things same thing that's going on all right so let's move on to the next tip and trick so number seven if you're using Yanfly's region restriction plugin you can quickly and easily make hidden paths that block off areas and like make puzzle design easier so let me show you what I'm talking about here. So on the map, if we go to our region, we see that I've got region 77 up here to draw this right there, and I've got 85 right there. Well, what do these numbers mean? Well, the numbers are completely arbitrary. Once you've got the plugin installed, you go to the parameters, region restriction, and you put whatever number you want, and then whatever number you want, um, you draw that on the map. So for me, I'm using 85 because it's red, and I'm using 77 because it's green, and that helps me uh, figure out what's passable, what's not passable. You can put whatever number you want here. So, 77 is going to let me walk across this part of the, the map, even though the tile set has an X there and it won't let you walk across. When you, do, when you use this region restriction plugin, you can walk across the map here and uh, get the treasure chest. And you can kind of make uh, hidden barrier puzzles. And there's lots of things you can do. You can even fix up some of your maps that have little uh, areas that you want to be different so you don't have to edit your tile set. So if I walk up here, I can walk across the water here, but I can't walk on the water only where I've drawn that line and I've put a little red block there so it's not letting me go on that block you can see if we go down here now we can get that treasure chest very simple very easy but it's super powerful and you should take advantage of that tip and trick if you didn't already know about it 
Let's move on to number six. So tips and tricks number six. If you're using Yanfly's element core, you can have skills and abilities deal multiple types of damage. Now your flaming katana can be physical slashing and fire damage. So this is a really cool thing that adds uh, a lot of customize, uh, customizability uh, to your skills. So let's take uh, Twister Blade for example. This is going to do 12 hits, it's going to do slashing uh, and wind damage. It's going to do physical slashing and wind damage. So really easy once you put Yanfly's Element Core in your plugin list. All you have to do is a very simple note tag, multiple elements, and then you put the number of elements you want right there. So you can select the main element right here, which counts exactly the same. So if I were to go like this, and then put that physical and to, to figure out what numbers you use you go to the types so if I see wind is 7 and I want to add wind element to this I'll just put 7 right now right there so it, now it's the same thing as if I have wind and then one right here for physical I got physical wind and slashing damage really cool plugin guys check it out you can multiply your damage you can add the damage if you're fighting something that's strong against one element or weak to the other element you know it kinda counteracts so uh, I really recommend this plugin and it's a cool tips and trick to add to your project to make it cooler and it's very easy so let's move on to the next tips and tricks number five when you're making world maps you can use the circle draw tool to make the maps uh, look more to make continents look more realistic and draw them with little, little to no effort um, so let's go ahead and illustrate that we've got this world map here let's zoom out a little bit and let's go ahead and go to the draw layer and select our circle tool so if we if we were on the square thing and we wanted to draw with the square tool then you know I mean we could let's go ahead and select like some land you know but then it's sort of like you have to go in and manually make that it looks completely unnatural right so let's get rid of that if we use a circle tool look how fast we can go to make a continent we can just go draw some random circles and it already looks more like a natural continent than it with the blocks and we can right click to select one thing maybe add a lake in here with some circle there it is very very cool and then you can continue to to work and with just circle tool guys use the circle tool when you're making maps let's move on to the next tips and trick so number four uh, when you're making your maps you can right click on the map and hold it to highlight a selection of the map and quickly replicate the design you've already made so if I want to basically make another continent on the other side and I want it to look similar to this one I can right click hold drag across the whole thing and now I'm going to take this and go to the left hand side uh, with the draw tool and I can just basically draw that whole continent right there and uh, let's see that's uh, you could even select like the square tool to draw like kind of like that you can use the circle tool to draw it in a different way as well and you can see quickly I've made a bunch of different landmarks here and it's basically replicating the thing so say you draw a really cool house on a map you can right click the whole house and then just paste that house very very simple but uh, with that tool so cool easy tips and trick that you might want to uh, use if you're not already using it so now let's go to number three we can copy paste animation patterns and quickly create new custom animations let me show you what I'm talking about go to your animations tab and basically what we can do is take a uh, take a pre-existing pattern let's take this one right here let's copy it and let's go to the bottom pick any one you want most of them work pretty well some of them don't work perfectly but um, a lot of them do so we've got the pierce thunder effect right there so really cool effect right but let's you can easily tell well I can anyway when you see default animations in the battle it, it, I could just it's a, it's kind of like a, a buzz kill for me when I see the default animations because it's so easy to make custom ones we've copied and we pasted it let's change the image from the stick to something else let's go with uh, I don't know what I clicked thunder but we'll go ahead I didn't mean that but we'll, we'll just select that one and then change that to holy and then boom now we've got a custom animation let's change the sound effect to thunder thunder 4 let's change this sword one to whatever you want it to be randomly thunder 8 Let's change this one from Thunder 8 to, I don't know, Thunder 2. And let's bring it up all the way. We can change the, the screen flash to a target flash. We can change the, the hues up and down a little bit. And then boom. We've created a custom animation right there. We'll call it Custom Thunder, whatever you want to call it. 
really cool tips and trick to create your own custom pattern uh, to use pat pre-existing patterns as a template and quickly make your own custom animations for your skills and your items and abilities let's move on to number two so tips and tricks number two you can make gold pouches or like gem bags or random item drops with a simple or a complex common event so let me show you what I'm talking about. Go to the, your common events or wherever you want to make this on a regular event. And in this one right here, it's, uh, it's called it, when you get the item, the bronze weapon drop, it, the item calls it this common event. So you use the item and then this whole thing plays. And very, very simple, easy way to do it is you control a variable, whatever number you want, whatever name you want. We set it to a random number between one and the maximum number of items you want to have in that gym bag, right? So you can say like, uh, if it rolls a one, you're going to get a ruby. If it rolls a two, you're going to get a diamond. If it rolls a three, you're going to get a topaz or so forth and so on. In this instance, um, I've got it with a bronze dagger, bronze sword, bronze katana. So you can get a random weapon, right? You could do that for all different tiers. Very simple thing to do. After you control that variable and make it a random number between one and the total number of items you want to drop, you show an animation if you want, sound effects, flash, it's all up to you. Then you do a, a conditional branch. Right click, insert new conditional branch. You do a variable. You control that variable right here uh, or, or you you select the variable that you're controlling to randomize and you say equal to one with no else branch and if it is then you award whatever item you want you show some text so to let the player know they got that item and you can here's another little mini tip and trick you can use uh, this text code IW and in the brackets to show the the icon and the name of the weapon number 51 you can use slash IA for armors you can use slash II for items and that's a quick way to reference uh, to have it the the actual like sword show up in the in the chat in the text box. So that's a, a quick thing. You copy this, you paste it. Remember, no else handlers. You change the common uh, the conditional branch to equals two instead of one, and then you basically just change the weapon and the text. And very very easy. Random gold pouch, random gym bag, random armor box, random weapon box. Uh, I thought it was something really cool and you can even take this really far and you can create like a Gashapon system. So let me show you my artifact draw system here. Let's zoom in a little bit. So in this event right here, it's doing the same thing but twice and on a bigger scale. So it's going to roll a number between 1 and 100 and it's going to pick a rank from, from rank 1 to rank 12. So if it rolls above a 1 and less than 25, then it's going to turn on the 1 star switch. If it rolls above 26 and below 45, it's going to turn on the 2 star switch. So remember, we're not doing any else handlers. We're just doing a condition and one nested condition in the control switch. When that switch, uh, when we get that, that roll and you select a switch, no matter what number it rolls out of that 100, it's going to be one of those switches. So if it rolls the first one, then it's going to turn on this page. And on this page, basically all of this is flash, right? Except for this. You're going to control the variable between 1 and the maximum number of items you want. The same thing is, is going to apply. No uh, else handler you just do a conditional branch if the that uh, that variable is a one then you give an item you do some flash whatever you want show some text so the player knows what he's getting that's it copy paste that if it's a two you get this if it's a three you get that and then it's the same thing on all of these pages you know but this is if it got the two star then the three star all the way up to the 12 star so this is a really complex event I'll put a link to it uh, in the cards so that you guys can see this tutorial if you want to see how I made the Gashapon loot system it's been improved several times since I did that tutorial but uh, yeah that's there let's move on to the last uh, tips and tricks of this video so number one RPG Maker MV tips and tricks that I have to tell you is if you're using the side view battle system and I know most of you probably are then you want to add action sequences so at action sequencing is a super cool thing to do and basically what it does is it lets your characters uh, show a bunch of animations if, however many you want shake the screen flash the screen control everything variable switches all in the in the middle of combat while you're attacking have your character jumping across the screen uh, all kinds of different stuff I think I should just uh, illustrate it for you guys what an action sequence is you probably already know what it is but if you don't you definitely want to add action sequences well all you have to do is get a few plugins Yanfly's core engine battle engine core action sequence pack one two three that's all you need for that to work but let's go ahead and put our starting uh, position right there and if you don't uh, know how to make them, you can check out the help file. If you don't have time to make them and you don't really want to learn how to make them, I've got a bunch of free ones on my website, driftwoodgaming.com. So check out my website if you want to just get some copy-paste uh, action sequences. So let me show you what an action sequence is. So here's, here's one, Twister Blade. We've got animation across the screen. Character goes back and forth, back and forth. We got like three or four animations going on. Here's another one. We're going to Kamehameha across the screen. 
you know. So that's an action sequence. So that breaks you out of the the general. You take one step and swing your sword, and magically the guy all the way across the screen takes damage. But yeah, so that's gonna do it for my my top 10 RPG Maker MV tips and tricks. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and you're interested in RPG Maker tutorials and uh, tips and tricks and top tens and all that stuff. Um, yeah, check out the the website if you want uh, free action uh, sequences and all kinds of other uh, stuff on the website there. You guys can follow me on Twitter too. I've got a Twitter account at uh, Driftwood Gaming. All this, it's all unified branding. Same thing. I'm at Driftwood Gaming on most social media. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys have any special requests, put them in the comments below. I answer special requests. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.